All right. What is up, everybody? How is it going? I'm actually in the Twitch chat uh, today. <clears throat> I don't know why I've never been in the Twitch chat before. I feel like it just always slips my mind. Um, but uh, hey, Virtual, how's it going? Uh, we have somebody really awesome on our stream today, and they are Koshi. Um, and uh, they, they really, I feel like, specialize in audio visuals. And uh, I didn't realize how extensively they were into this space um, up until really today when they started sharing some photos of their setup. And I was just like, oh, wow. Okay. Um, so, uh, Koshi, welcome on. Want to do a, a quick introduction? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, uh, DCL Curations. Uh, so yeah, I'm Koshi from uh, Last Slice Collective and from uh, Glitch Candies uh, project. Uh, uh, as Glitch Candies, uh, we're doing uh, audiovisual uh, NFTs. Uh, we launched in uh, Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, we name ourselves as uh, Glitch NFT Studio because uh, we are now like bringing clients to the central land. Uh, also from Cosmos ecosystem, but also like from different uh, like in real life as well. Uh, so, from my my background uh, is uh, I'm, I'm an electronic musician, a sound designer, uh, and new media artist. Uh, so I work on on sound design for you know like uh, over ten years, fifteen years, uh, and the same with uh, audiovisual installations. Uh, I, I program uh, my own software uh, using programming environment called MaxMSP. Uh, but I also use uh, modular synthesizers. Uh, I can show you in a, in a bit uh, some setups uh, that you control uh, with voltage. And so they're like physical devices that you kind of uh, mix and match and to build your own instrument. And then you connect and build your own another instrument uh, out of the cables connecting to those devices. Uh, so build your patch and uh, you can basically make anything you want. You have total control for sound design. That's why it's uh, super exciting for me. Uh, and we are bringing this uh, content to to the central land. Uh, uh, so uh, my uh, like because you were asking like how I get into the central land. So like my journey in, in crypto like started like in 2017, uh, and uh, yeah, I just purchased some and then just kept it until 2020, 21. Uh, and then I jumped into NFTs, uh, was looking into stuff. And uh, since uh, I'm interested in technology and doing uh, audiovisual stuff, that was like perfect use case, you know, like uh, uh, doing because uh, uh, in real life, I'm doing like an installations on, on multiple speakers and, uh, you know, like uh, designing a sound packs for uh, different companies or sound design for the synthesizers. Uh, uh, so NFT as, as an outlet for my uh, creative, uh, uh, like as a creative outlet, it, it's, it's super cool and fits perfectly. Um, is, so it's just uh, exploring that this medium. And I uh, and then I, I, in clubhouses, uh, I, I heard about the, the central and the metaverses for the first time, like in 2021. Uh, and I uh, yeah was wondering like what would be good uh, avenue uh, and uh, like uh, utility to add to those uh, audiovisual works. And, and that's why uh, uh, I found that I was researching a uh, metaverse and I found like, oh, that would be cool to make them as a kind of audiovisual sculptures or stuff like that uh, and put into people's uh, rented spaces. But I didn't have no idea about the central land at the time. Uh, and then I, uh, I found out about Last Slice Collective uh, and I joined uh, uh, like in July. I think they did the scene for uh, one of the NFT projects. Uh, I, I, I forgot the name now. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I joined, like I've seen that the scene, uh, I, I joined uh, right after and I started doing sound design. Uh, so I don't I, I don't think like many people uh, uh, making sound design for actually uh, the central land, but at the time it was mainly like DJs. Uh, so I, I started uh, doing like my first gig, sound design gig was for uh, Deadhead NFTs. Uh, we were doing um... oh, 
<laughs> for, for, <laughs> some uh, white noise break. <laughs> for Death NFTs, we were doing uh, like a, a really cool scene in the crypt. And they were launching an animation series. Uh, so like I, I did some design in there uh, for like a haunted uh, graveyard and the, and the spiders walking around. Uh, then I took part in uh, 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 there was Halloween event as well, and uh, and then the Playboy Playboy NFT Christmas. Uh, I, I did like some uh, composition for uh, Christmas uh, festive uh, carols, uh, and then in Samsung build as well. So like, uh, and then I started working uh, in SDK, uh, especially like once uh, I launched my collection uh, Glitch Candies on Stargaze as a Genesis collection, uh, and uh, the idea was to link uh, communities from Cosmos and from the Central Land uh, through this project. Uh, so the collection is uh, it was first of, of still images, uh, then we launched audiovisual uh, works uh, using the, the software. Uh, uh, we developed together with uh, with my team. Um, that's basically using using a uh, GLSL shaders. Uh, how so, real quick? How would I access that NFT collection? Uh, it's on uh, Stargaze. If you go to Stargaze Zone. Stargaze Zone. Yeah, this is NFT uh, marketplace on uh, Cosmos ecosystem. So it's um, it's layer one for NFTs. It's basically the whole blockchain. Uh, yeah, and if you go on marketplace, uh, type in glitch candies, mm -hmm. and yeah, our collections. Oh, look at you! You guys just pop right up there, don't you? Yeah, we are. We I think we're only glitch candies. <laughs> uh, uh, okay awesome okay yeah, yeah, yeah oh okay very sorry yeah i didn't mean to interrupt you i was just looking for it and was like yeah, oh, okay, okay. because they show like they actually so people can, can get the idea how they look like i, I can actually show uh, how i'm making one in, uh, in, in max msp as well because they are in the software we have developed ourselves i, I work with uh, fatbot uh, he's uh, a uh, really like amazing programmer uh, and he's designing GSL shaders and he works for the developer of Max MSP, which is the, pl the platform that we are using. And he, he generates, uh, he makes his own uh, like uh, objects uh, in there, made some mapping tools as well. Uh, and I work with Zureta NFT as well, who, who works in a uh, web to uh, enterprise or like a CTO, he has like 40 programmers under his command. Uh, so he, he's uh, yeah advising in the in the project, uh, uh, and uh, so the idea was to bring those uh, candies to uh, like or, or like a make like an ec ecosystem maybe or out of it and uh, start uh, making events in the central land. So we, we started like in May, uh, we put events in uh, Zetaplex. Uh, we, we rented uh, the venue from from Zeta, uh, so that, that was quite successful. We have lots of engagement. People are were coming actually to our Discord, and we we realized it's actually really cool avenue to link communities from Cosmos where there's no metaverse and actually people were exploring the central land and people from the central land could see our collection in, uh, in, in Cosmos and we're getting some rewards uh, in uh, in Atom and uh, and stars and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it's quite uh, quite exciting. And now we are actually starting to, to uh, move like uh, uh, apply for grants or, or bring the different clients into the central land uh, and we will be starting uh, some uh, really cool uh, headquarters soon of, of the actual uh, uh, chains that uh, are bringing nfts so hopefully that will bring more people to the central land as well and, uh, into, and we see ourselves a kind of a mashup between different communities from the central land and from from cosmos yeah, I, I love that. And I, I don't think too many people, at least, you know, in Decentraland are all that familiar with Cosmos. So it's interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll have to dive a little bit into how you went from Cosmos uh, to, to where you are now. But um, also in terms of the competitions we have running, I don't think we've ever had an audio component be a requirement for a competition. And I think, uh, well, Every time I've seen an audio component um, integrated into a submission, it's always just layered over in the YouTube video. It's not something that is um, actually built into the scene. And it'll be interesting. Maybe there are some things that uh, people watching right now can leverage for the upcoming competition. Um, and I do see we got Erica Gloom in chat with Cinzia Gabriel and 9A7A. What is up? How is it going? Um, 
But I, I do, just before we dive uh, big into the AV stuff and uh, start letting Koshi screen share, I do just want to go over our uh, latest uh, Decentraland builder competition. So this is the rescue, and you just threw a banger of a party on the lost island and now you have attracted the attention of some people somewhere out in the distance but we don't know who is coming to rescue you or what is coming to rescue you so you need to develop that rescue vehicle and animate the rescue vehicle so if it's a plane it's flying in if it's a boat it's sailing in um, and this is where i think you know maybe koshi some uh, some people could get kind of creative with the sounds and uh, if they wanted to go the SDK route, actually, you know, putting a vehicle in scene that you can hear approaching uh, as it's coming in for rescue, maybe something like that. But uh, we are back to the two week dev timelines for our contests. So the deadline is uh, two Fridays from now on the 18th and uh, prize pool is back to the $5,000 prize pool with five winners so um, if anybody has any questions over the competition feel free to hit us up in the discord but now i think i slaterate i think i'll turn over the screen share to koshi and uh, we can look at uh, how you actually go about making these audio visual experiences from like the audio from scratch and then how do you generate uh some visualization from the audio you have since created uh yeah so okay so it's it's quite a complex uh, process so i'll try to make it like <laughs> as, as, as uh, simple uh, uh, as possible because uh, in my workflow I, i'm actually yeah i'm using a modular synthesizer so so i know like not not uh, everyone is uh has like this kind of uh, setup. Uh, I can just show you, like, just so you get an idea uh, uh, how it looks like. So, like, this is, yeah, this is like the part of the setup. Uh, yeah, yeah, one second. Slater Aid, could we swap the uh, screens here? Boom. All right, perfect. Oh, man. And I love this image too. Uh, so, uh, yeah, wait, wait, can you just take a second to talk about your chords and what you have going on here in this, uh, this machine? Yeah. So, so, uh, so these two synthesizers are actually quite special. Uh, this is, uh, like a, a West coast uh, synthesis. Uh, one is search modular. It's uh, from seventies, but, uh, uh, the, the PCB boards and then the designs of, of, of these modules, uh, which is it contains the modules because like you can see like the one on the on the right the the white one uh, it has like three uh, bolts larger bolts uh, and th they were just most of these modules were, were designed in 70s uh, and uh, yeah so basically it, it works out, you connect the cords uh, they are like from minus five uh, to five volts uh, it's uh, like if you're making a melodic stuff is uh, one volt per octave uh, but I, I make usually like glitches and, and beats and, and stuff and generative uh, patches. So like this is like actually true gen generative uh, music that, that you can make. That uh, and then the one on the left is it's Bukla uh, modular synthesizer. It's two hundred uh, E system. Uh, it's actually it, it, it was developed in uh, I think it, it was launched in two thousand two. Uh, so Bukla is one of the the pioneers in electronic music and in synthesizers. So like these were one of the first synthesizers that, that came. Uh, this is his uh, Bukla's uh, second uh, or third actually system. So it contains us, us individual modules. You can see like in this case, I have like four on top, then there's another four and there's another four and you can mix and match and combine and then buy different uh, different modules. And I find them like NFTs basically because uh, you, you collect them, but you can make sounds out of them and, uh, and you build your own instrument with that. Uh, this one actually has presets so you can uh, actually uh, once you patch it you can save the the settings then you can tweak the knobs and then save another preset uh, and then you can uh, yeah you, you have more control over it the one on, on the right the search modular you, you make everything from scratch and you can't go back and once you like go out of your patch then it's like no way back so basically the the workflow on this is 
uh, once you're happy, once you connected your cables, once you once you have your part, you just hit record and you just record for two hours, you know. <laughs> so, that, so, uh, so I mean, these are fairly old, like pieces of equipment, or I guess not necessarily old, but uh, they were like kind of the first, some of the first of its kind. There's got to be software out there now that can do exactly what these things do, right? So I'm just curious, um, you know, do you prefer using the old school hardware? And if so, why? Yeah, I, I prefer using a uh, old school for, for like uh, uh, from the sound reason and flexibility uh, and the interface. Because uh, the sound quality, you can't match it with, so with software. Uh, and uh, the physical aspect of actually patching uh, is totally different uh, as well. So it's the quality of sound uh, and uh, the feel that you actually have the interface and you build your own stuff and then your record. Uh, but then I, whatever I do is I, rec I put that back into different uh, devices. So like uh, the, the Waldorf one on the, on the top, the black one, uh, now I'm using this one actually the most, uh, and it has multiple amount of uh, multiple synthesis types. Uh, so you can generate the chords and this, uh, you can load the samples in. Uh, it has like, uh, I think like eight polyphony or 16 uh, voices uh, of polyphony. I designed actually presets for it, for the manufacturer. So like I made like 256 presets for it. Uh, and the one below it's, it's a drum machine. So I also use that. Uh, I load the, I generate the sounds in the modular synthesizer and I load the samples into the drum machine and then I can sequence and I make beats out of that. And sometimes I, I then uh, move that stuff out of the drum machine uh, and put into the, the other devices like, like these. This is, these are Eurorack modular. Uh, so, so this is the most modern uh, wave of, of uh, so there's multiple companies. It's like hundreds of companies and each of these companies have like 20 different modules. So it's like basically NFTs for electronic music. <laughs> uh, and you build your own setups. You can build, you have multiple cases. You can, you can, they, all they share is the same format. So it's the same power. You can just connect different modules uh, into the whatever is the size of your case. You can decide the size of your case, uh, and they have the same uh, jack connection. So they, they have different cables than, than the, the original ones uh, I, I showed, which, ha which have uh, banana jacks. These have uh, mono mini jacks. Uh, so like your headphone, uh, you know, like laptop headphone kind of thing, but mono. And you connect uh, them together, and they have. Uh, basically, there's Raspberry Pi behind those. Uh, some of them, some are analog. So you can mix analog and digital. Uh, they have like a you know proper computer be behind uh, behind these. So I'm uh, kind of combining all that setup. You know, like making stuff on the modular, then loading to the drum machine, and then loading drum machine back. Uh, in, in my collections and experiences in the central land, I actually even uh, put stuff uh, in the central land and then uh, feed, fed it back to the. Uh, to the, uh, the modular and then record it again and put it back into the central app. So it has like a metaverse <laughs> uh, yeah, feedback loop kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, the, there is software that you, can, that you can use. There is free software. Uh, it's called Pure Data. It's, it's one of them. Uh, I'm using a Max MSP, which is another uh, bit of software. It's actually initially was made for, uh, for uh, coding music. Uh, it was used in academia mainly. Uh, uh, you can see like it's it's node-based programming environment. So you actually connect blocks together with the nodes, with the chords, like digital chords. Uh, like you know, you can put like random five. It will generate random number. And like a bang, connect to it. I for integer number. And then once I click, it's gonna generate random number. You know. <laughs> You connect like this uh, to uh, I, I use that actually example for uh, selecting for giveaways on my Discord. <laughs> I don't know what looks more complicated right now your your uh, your IRL setup with all the cords or this setup right here on your computer. I guess like I so, so just out of curiosity, I guess what do you typically make and how long does it take you to make something? And when I say like, what do you typically make? I mean, um, you know, you talked about making some experiential sounds for different builds, but then, you know, could you create like an entire song with legit like guitar and drums? Um, you know, are you typically creating these 
actual songs or just blips of sound like a door opening or looped ambient music and how long does it typically take you to create um stuff like that from scratch it's it really d depends on the project uh, i used to because you know like i'm a musician for 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 a long time uh uh, I studied music uh, at the university as well. I had multiple bands, uh, so I had bands where we were playing uh, uh, with uh, jazz musicians. I was recording them live, uh, playing on the drum machines live, mixing them, and we had video mapping at the same time. Uh, so, like, I was composing. Like, I have multiple albums actually released as well. Uh, uh, so I can uh, see so yeah, I, I can do that but uh, like over the years or like uh, over the last I don't know like five years or even more I, I switched more like modular I started like in 2013 or so so like uh, almost 10 years ago I started to go into modular and then that uh, kind of brought me like from the jazz experience with musicians where I played drum machines with the jazz musicians I and now I'm playing drum machines with the digital algorithms <laughs> Uh, or analog algorithms made out of chords that respond uh, to to my playing or like I basically jam with, with, with them and actually this uh, so so how long does it take it, it, it's it's really difficult uh, to answer what, what uh, you know because it, it all depends on the project if I'm making an album it, it might take uh, you know like several months La last album I made it took me like a like you know a couple of months uh, or so uh, if I'm designing sound pack for the for the synthesizer, you know, like uh, it might take me, you know, like a couple of weeks or, or, or a month as well. Depends how big it is. If it's if we're talking of uh, hundreds of sounds or you know, like are we talking blips? Uh, in the central land, uh, it's uh, it also varies because like uh, I design, uh, for example, I make I play jam on the synth, like uh, make the patch. We call them patches. You know, like the as the one setting that you connect the chords you're happy with the output the sound that is coming uh, out of it uh, and you, you record it and then i edit those uh, sometimes i layer sometimes i just take the raw uh, sound i can i can show you actually in, in here because I, I use them as a traits in my collection uh, those gems like potentially that could take one evening to record you know like one hour say uh, and then i select the best bits out of it mix it in ableton live uh, which is the software uh, I use for uh, can show uh, can show you here for music production. I think like most of the people know it, uh, and then I and I mix uh, mix that stuff live. So especially if you see like uh, here is like four minutes or so, like, and I use it as a one layer, uh, uh, one bit of, of sound, and then. Uh, I mix the field recordings as well, so I have like a microphone setup that I, I go and actually uh, around town or uh, different locations that I mix uh, sounds from the real life, uh, and then uh, that gives actually additional vibe to the uh, an environment or whatever I'm using it for. Even if I process that through the synthesizer, it's still you get different texture, different sound material if if you're using the actually real life recordings. Uh, processed uh, through the granular synthesis or through some effects and layered with the electronics. I can I can show you as an example here. You should be able to hear that hopefully. Yeah, we yeah we can hear it. I like that uh, that spatial vibe. Um, so, so like with your with your hardware chord setup, how often do you actually mess with those chords? Like, are are you? And this is kind of ignorance on my part because this is kind of blowing my mind right now. But um, like, do you just have? it's set up in a way where now your hardware is set up and you just mess with it from a software perspective, or are you constantly plugging and playing away with your hardware as well? D 
Did we lose Koshi? Koshi. Yeah, it's, I muted myself in the live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, most recently, most recently, I'm uh, I'm most focused on actually using software Max MSP and designing my patches in in, in this. Uh, but with modular, it also depends on the synthesizer. You know, like on the on the Bukla one. Uh, I have like one one patch for a long time uh, on Eurorack systems, uh, which is like slightly different experience. It takes you to different places. Uh, I do like you know a couple of patches a, a night, or like once I have a jam session uh, or, or, or session with them. Uh, depends, you know, like uh, per session I do like two free patches perhaps, uh, and I also change the the, 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 the systems. You know, like uh, does it showed you? Here, like there's like few cases. So, like for example, the the the, the brown one, uh, the wooden one on the on the bottom. This is my travel case, so I, I can take it with me, and it has like a uh, the whole computer with multiple modules in in one. This module ER three hundred one, for example, the the, the gray one. Uh, it has lots of stuff, and I can connect the mono mono uh, controller, which I actually can design my own uh, sequencers with that, uh, and they are both connected by by I two C cable, and I and uh, yeah, so I can trigger the sounds and make the whole setup like like I, like with computer, but then you have cores as well in there. Uh, and then on, on the other side, uh, I, I use this big case, for example, to process stuff uh, I make. If, uh, like if I want like really nice delay and some analog filters, uh, it, it makes really awesome sound. And also this module Morphogen in here, the black one, it has granular synthesis. It's like a looper. It makes really awesome uh, sounds as well, like from either from real life or. So it really depends uh, on the what I aim to do. Like, for example, like if I have to do like kick drums or a pack for the different percussion sounds, you know, like uh, uh, then I take different modules and, and or make a setup or or I can connect all the cases. This is the, the beauty of it, you know. Like I can connect or, or remove one case or you know. Or just play with one case as a limitation and just challenge myself. Okay, I'm gonna use only this today. You know, so so it really depends. Uh, I, I like that, I, and I, I like how you're like, yeah. Sometimes I might challenge myself. You know, only one case today, not five. Um, but uh, software called VCV Rack. For anyone who wants to try that, there's VCV Rack, which is a free software that you can actually uh, lots of. Uh, uh, manufacturers or uh, who actually produce modules, uh, digital modules, because many of those modules from Eurorack are digital, uh, meaning there's microprocessor, small processor, uh, and actually the synthesis is digital. You just control it with analog signal. You control it with voltage. Uh, but uh, you can have the same uh, software, uh, the same uh, uh, firmware or, or a kind of from from this module uh, in uh, in the digital module that you can actually. Uh, Patch uh, on the computer uh, in VCV rack, and they have it kind of just so you can explore it, test it. Uh, so it's really cool, and it's actually free uh, for for the community to. Uh... Yeah, I'm looking at that right. You VCV rack, you said yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's later, right? I just posted that link. Um, that's pretty cool. Well, I I know what. Oh wow, I can't believe it's already been 36 minutes. Um, but I, I know we haven't even gotten to the actual visual portion of the audio visual yet. So um, I, I know you have uh, something pulled up here, though. So, yeah, how do you take what you have uh, now created and visualize that? Uh, so actually, this is software we made, uh, we, I, I called it the candy factory <laughs> because it's a glitch candies. We make glitch candies with this. <laughs> I call them glitch candies because they're like an eye poppy candy. Uh, Colors uh, and uh, also this was kind of the, also the journey for me to make uh, music NFTs interesting because uh, music like uh, NFTs are really visual. The community NFT community is really used to visual aspect with the gifts, PNGs. Uh, so it's really uh, music is actually quite hard. Uh, so uh, to uh, to mint and then to present. Uh, so. That's why I started to jam back, and, and that brought me back into the uh, Max MSP and uh, playing with the visuals. I, I used to do that ages ago, like in 2008 or so. Uh, I, I was playing with Jitter, uh, which it used to be like a separate uh, part of objects for Max. Uh, now this is the like whole package that you buy. It's called uh, it's Max 8. Now it's the, the version 8 of, of Max. Uh, and uh, so you can 
make those uh, uh, visuals and audio and you can connect them together. Uh, so, so that was my journey to actually start uh, looking at uh, how I can make visuals for my music and then how I can make NFTs out of that. Uh, so that's how I uh, kind of uh, made this patch. So you didn't, uh, you weren't working with visuals until really you wanted to introduce the NFT component. I I, I used to work with visuals uh, like yeah early on two thousand eight, but then uh, I focused more on sound and I was working vis with visual artists uh, in the collaboration uh, most of the time. And then uh, once I, I once NS NFTs came about, I, I I was kind of going back into it, looking at the because I I used Max. I am actually beta tester for the platform as well. Uh, uh, so I was using that for for, for ages, uh, but I was I wasn't just focused on the visual uh, element. Uh, that's why I hit up the Fed Thought, who is actually specially focused on the visual part of uh, Max, not the audio, and uh, we collaborated on on this patch. And uh, uh, yeah, so we can. Uh, the the cool aspect of that is so it, it brings the synthesis into visual thing because. Uh, some of the settings uh, actually become uh, uh, traits in JSON files, like they become the traits of the NFT. Uh, so it's basically, uh, I hand sculpt the, the, the NFT, the, which, which is in the form of video. I, I record that as a video um, with using different settings. I can use like different basic shapes. So like this is cube, this is sphere, uh, Capsule, can uh, make torus is quite cool. We have different blend modes, uh, so it can make it uh, transparent. We have the bloom. Uh, so, so I noticed if you go back over to the option for like torus and stuff. Uh, so it seems like those were pretty much uh, comparable to like what Blender allows you to input as basic assets. So I'm just curious if somebody developed a model, say like a car or anything else would they hypothetically be able to upload it in here and instead of having a tourist like have a car that is uh being impacted or influenced by the sound uh yes you can totally do that yeah you can actually with max you can do any anything that's the that's the kind of uh, beauty and the, and the curse because <laughs> it's so open platform you have to really know what you want to do but it's totally possible in this case what we are doing now uh uh it, you it's not possible in this type of patch and environment you're using the glsl shaders and the, and the workflow i have in there but it's possible to actually fed for developed uh, the the object that allows us to save a obj file and actually we were generating wearables out of that which i will show you in, in a second uh, uh, so like we're going other way around uh, generating shapes and then using them as wearables uh, or as assets uh, uh, in the game as uh, glitch candy sculptures uh, which were actually really cool experience for uh, our community and, and like for myself <laughs> i can speak for myself especially because uh, we had those uh, as uh, images in the scene but also and videos in the scene uh, but also like as a sculptures uh, and from my background being like a new media art and art showing on the you know vis uh, mapping festivals or in the art galleries, working with SDK and sound is super cool because I can exactly ma uh, put the sound sources when I want, like speakers, you know, like it's my uh, space, uh, open space for for placing sound, and I, I have total control of where they are and what they do, which is uh, which is super cool. Uh, and going back to this to this patch, you can see like uh, here we have these parameters and then they basically so that when I change this, this is changing the noise frequency. Uh, and then when I, when I press save, it, it saves uh, the JSON file, which is actually the traits of that NFT. So like if I save this as a video, uh, I have the JSON uh, file uh, uh, that corresponds to it. And actually this JSON makes uh, the settings of that. So I can potentially load that into the software and have a very similar shape uh, in there. Um, this is kind of fun fact. I, I have, uh, well, we have different uh, points of view for that. Uh, we are using kind of noise algorithms that uh, modify the, the height map and the texture of this and the color. Uh, and you, so this is a software you're using or this is a software you built? 
uh, both. <laughs> Using a platform to build this custom yeah, so, so the platform, like uh, if you open the patch, basic patch looks like this, you know. So you, you can like uh, Metro uh, twenty uh, or two hundred is gonna uh, bang every uh, two hundred milliseconds. D is a bang. It's like a click, and then if I do this, it's gonna bang every 200 seconds. If I want to bang it every second, it will be 1,000 milliseconds, and that's every second. Hmm. Okay, so this is the, the most simple part you can do, right? Uh, and this is, the platform is called Max, or Max, Max. Max 8. Uh, and this is the software or the tool we made in Max, using Max. Uh, so as I was showing like before, like- Oh, yeah. <laughs> Patch. So like it, it took us a while actually to, to make it, but you know like so now the the cool thing in Max is that you can make interface for it. So this is the interface. So I made my own tool and I'm using it now to generate visuals. Uh, and I have some audio in here as well. So audio is actually uh, not uh, influencing the visual, but I, I I play here with with the vibe and uh, matching visual uh, to audio. Uh, like I'm playing VJ set, basically. Uh, it's actually not uh, audio reactive because uh, I used to do in real life lots of audio reactive, only audio reactive stuff most of the time, actually, with, with artists who's really into audio reactive. It is amazing uh, doing uh, audio reactive the visuals. But these are not audio reactive. But the thing is, the, the theory is that your brain will adjust it and will make it work that it looks like it's audio reactive, even if it's not. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so I make it... I play it here, and I make it maybe a bit more. Like, you know. Is this going to so? Is this going to loop, or is this going to constantly generate, um, you know, some something new? It's generating something new. All the time. I like this. This looks pretty cool. Looping, but the audio is actually a loop from the generative patch made on modular synth. And this, and this is actually a beat on the drum machine put into the granular uh, looper. Uh, that is affected by multiple uh, sine wave generators that are uh, moving the loop and uh, modifying it. And I just basically uh, record it and slice 20 seconds of it. And so this is the, the length of, of the length of the NFT or of that is, is 20 seconds. Uh, but here, uh, uh, this shape is uh, being mo uh, modified by uh, noise Berlin and fractal fractal FBM uh, algorithms, uh, and actually I can mash and uh, put different weight to them, and I can uh, modify like the elements, the height of it. I, I find like yeah, this one looks quite cool. Uh, I can make them uh, different blend modes. Actually, they modify quite a bit the. And and you were saying that you can then take these and turn these into wearables and sculptures. Yes, it's, it's from different parts, but but uh, similar. Yeah, we we we've made it into wearables. I can actually show you in, in uh, uh, our Glitch Heads collection. So the idea is because uh, that was actually inspiration from. So like I can just stop this, and then uh, I have the shape generated. I can just move it around. I like it, and then uh, potentially I can save it. Uh, not in actually this particular patch. You can save it as OBJ file, and then I actually collaborated with another artist with uh, Ar Arcanomus, with Al Alex uh, from Last Slice, uh, who helped me actually make it into low poly wearable. Uh, because this is like half high poly and complex uh, complex shapes. Uh, so yeah, so we made our uh, wearables, and not all, it was actually quite difficult to mo like modify them into the wearables. Uh, 
fr from uh, the version of this uh, uh, this patch and make them uh, low poly. But yeah, but that's uh, uh, and then yeah, when I started talking about the inspiration. Inspiration come from our uh, community that started to use uh, glitch candies as profile pic, and I never actually that wasn't my intention. I, I didn't think about it. Because uh, our first collection was of still images, because videos weren't supported on the Stargaze Launchpad, which was the marketplace where we released them as a, as a Genesis collection. So we, uh, I released uh, first uh, uh, images, uh, which I was looking at them as a kind of generative art that I would like to put on the and print and put on the wall. Uh, but uh, our collectors started to use them as profile pics, and I was like, oh, how this is actually a really cool idea. Uh, and then we. You know, like I, I started making video uh, the videos because the videos were actually first, and then I made them into because of that limitation, we made them into pic uh, pictures, images, and then I released the the AV drop as a airdrop, uh, and in the in the central land uh, we thought this is cool, let's make them into wearable helmet, because uh, in the central land uh, helmet renders actually as your profile pic as an avatar uh, in the central land uh, as a profile pic so if you have that. So that was the, the reason why we actually selected the uh, helmet, but actually helmet looks like big glitch head. <laughs> uh, um, so, so when you were turning this into something low poly, I mean, did you basically just start from scratch and develop something that kind of looked like this? Or did you actually export this or import it, I guess, to Blender and then just try to take down the poly count? Yeah, basically that, yeah. Uh, but so yeah, you started I, with this object and tried taking down the poly count to make it fit the try limits? Yeah, yeah. We, so like that's why the Alex was uh, helping us actually in that process. And, and they came out really, really well. Uh, can we can we look at some of those? I I don't know if I've seen um if I've seen this wearable in Decentraland. Or if I have, I don't think I, I realized how it was actually made. Kind of low key. <laughs> huh? It's probably low key. That's why. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I'm I'm hopping onto the marketplace right now. What uh like what is the name of one of them? Uh, glitch candy, legendary glitch helmet. Glitch eyes. Is it this? No, 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 no. It's it's it's, it's a head. Yeah. Uh, head. I'll show you how they look uh, in uh, in the actually in the scene. Okay. I don't know. Why would it let me find your stuff? So. This is actually the scene I made for the uh, for the beach can is Genesis black. One of them Ooh. looks like that. I'm... And the other one is Epic Glow. I. Th Glitch candies Genesis Black. Why can't I find this is, that? This is the legendary. This is the legendary one. Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I found it, uh, and the epic glow looks like that. And the cool, I like that. That's the cool. Cool feature uh, of that is uh, it, we have female and male, and it changes the texture based on the the gender. That was uh, Cyclopas uh, hack. Uh, he told me about. I don't know if you can actually view that. Here no. So like if it if you are male you'll get different color and uh, if you if if your avatar is male it will have different color. So my avatar is actually female uh, and it changes. Um, I it, want one of these. I'm trying to I'm trying to search for it right now, but for some reason it just will not let me uh, let me find yeah, this. Try Gage Candy's epic glow. I mean I yeah typed that verbatim glitch. Candies, epic, and glow. Nada. I'll, oh, wait. Okay. I found it. Oh, you don't. Oh, they're not for sale. Yeah, we use them mainly, like, actually, that's another thing. We use them mainly as a reward for participation and for our holders because we make events, and uh, whoever comes and uh, 
tries to find the puzzle. We, we make a puzzle and we make mini games. And whoever finds the the puzzle uh, and uh, and uh, the password or or whatever's the uh, the game or the event about, uh, if they get the right answer, they get the legendary one. If they get the wrong answer, they get epic for participation. Is there currently something going on that uh, people would be able to participate in? Uh, not at the moment. Uh, we, we we make them usually like such a, a such a tease. Yeah, we make them as a weekend event, but uh, but uh, the stuff is uh, the stuff is coming actually soon. I just can't talk about it yet because it's uh, we are developing stuff for uh, uh, for clients, so we are focused uh, mainly on that. Uh, but yeah, the, these will have also. Uh, so we are kind of moving similar workflow uh, for the work of, of uh, for the clients uh, as well. That's that's really awesome. Um, I, I think these look so cool and uh i mean perhaps i mean this this would be something in the future but perhaps when smart wearables become a thing again would it be able to have one of those on uh animated you know in scene through a smart wearable to the music that is going on around you yeah so like that was uh, actually uh, we, we were developing actually smart wearable we have a beta version of it and then they were shut down uh, so, but uh, yeah, so our idea was to have a huge candy pet that follows you and you can uh, and helps you in, uh, in various ways in the experiences we, we develop. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, smart wearables will be back. They'll be back. But the idea was like if you like one of the features, for example, if you meet someone in the glitch hat, then the, the one song will play or some sound will play, uh, or you can you know spawn multiple of them and then they help you in parkour or something like that. Or use it as a greeting or as a social game kind of thing. So yeah, we have like quite a few ideas uh, for them. But uh, yeah, we're wait looking forward to uh, hearing why once we are when they are back. Um, I, I feel like they're not going to be too far out. But I know. Uh, so we have we've got five minutes left here. Um, you have a set for the upcoming Metaverse Music Festival, don't you? Yeah, so, so basically the set was uh, developed uh, using the software I was just showing. So this is actually the li live recording uh, of the uh, and gen generated uh, to different tunes, different uh, different patches I made, different tunes, uh, and uh, and put together. Uh, and so uh, people will be able to to view it on OG stage. Uh, which is the Central Land Community stage, uh, and uh, this is happening on Thursday at 10:30 p.m. UTC. Is our set is playing, and uh, also part of this set, uh, this, the set will be uh, made into collection uh, that is coming on uh, Territory Network, which is the new chain on Cosmos uh, ecosystem, uh, which is also like uh, on, on Cosmos ecosystem. Each uh, project uh, that launches is a separate chain. They're like an apps app chain. Uh, and territory is the new one, and uh, whoever purchases our uh, NFT will be eligible for airdrop of Tori from of the tokens of the uh, of, of that chain. Uh, and actually, the, all the holders uh, of Glitch Candy Collection of any collection uh, are eligible. Like if they have more than one candy, if they have two candies, they are eligible for uh, 100 Tori airdrop and a snapshot is going to be taken soon uh, and then they can claim that uh, from their wallet so and at the moment it's, I think it's like 50 60 bucks uh, based on the recent price on Tori I think it's fluctuating but uh, yeah something something like that so so uh, our holders are quite happy <laughs> because of that and uh, we are we also have uh, larger plans with the territory network we want to bring them into the central land to make HQ and uh, and some games uh, for that so that's another alpha uh, for the collaboration. So first is the airdrop to our collections. Second is uh, our drop uh, on their uh, launchpad because they have the launchpad. Uh, and uh, then uh, we want to develop the games for them uh, actually using our collection uh, uh, and using the assets that will make the boosts to that game. And do you have a, a link for that as well? No, this is... this is uh, it, it, The link will be on... Uh, on do you want Tori, Tori Network on the, or... Uh, yeah Terry so if you type territory network or on territory on Twitter you should be able to territory.com is there is the launchpad territory 
yeah, territory, and the token is called Tori. Ah, uh, okay, I see it on yours now. Interesting. This is the first I'm hearing of territory. Yeah, this is this is the new brand new project. Cool. In the launch part, they will have. Uh, uh, social uh, network kind of thing uh, with the chats. Uh, they have marketplace already open as well. Uh, uh, staking, they have uh, their collection Riot uh, that just came out that will have uh, uh, different play to earn mechanics uh, as well. So like, we want to kind of integrate that. Uh, they, they will be on multiple chains. So they just, I, I think, started on uh, using Cos Cosmos SDK. So they started on, on Cosmos uh, ecosystem. Uh, so yeah, so like uh, we are quite excited to co collaborate with them and uh, bring them to the to central and uh, like end of this year, beginning of the next year, hopefully, uh, once everything goes to plan. Yeah, awesome. I I'm gonna look into this a little bit more. I've been um, I've been expanding my metaverse horizons lately and looking into just kind of what else is uh, is going on out there. And there's a lot of really cool stuff being worked on. Yeah, so there's multiple actually metaverses uh, coming on Cosmos uh, ecosystem as well. Uh, it's like, you know, near eco ecosystem, uh, uh, there's Solana ecosystem, Cosmos is, is like that. It's, uh, 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 they're not out yet. So that's why we are kind of bringing metaverse that is existing and we think Decentraland is the best one, especially like with open SDK, decentralized uh, on by community uh, and the highest quality at the moment uh, that you can actually play with assets and uh, uh, available through the browser. So like, that's why I'm like, the more I work in the central and uh, playing with SDK, the, the, the more I'm uh, bullish on and, and excited that you can make games and really cool experiences using that. You see like we converted our music into audiovisual stuff, uh, can play audiovisual uh, sets, make them into wearables. There's multiple stuff, you know, uh, and then apply that to the clients, bring them in. Uh, bring different NFT collections from different chains uh, as well to give them metaverse experience, uh, present them to different audience, to, to uh, community in the central land, you know, and so it's lots of benefits. But I just wanted to show like, because since the time is uh, uh, kind of running out and uh, I, I <laughs> to show you how, how uh, uh, this is the scene actually we, we used as this studio uh, for, for registry, the central and registry. Uh, I just showed it because uh, no face ID, uh, uh, up to him because he helped us with the modeling. This is actually on, uh, this was uh, for our client's work, uh, kind of alpha that this is coming uh, and the end of the year. Uh, the model was actually inspired by the, the Asian uh, temples and made with the sci-fi. Uh, and since land is next to the Roman Museum, uh, we, we kind of uh, thought it would be cool lore to make it that, uh, you know, like make some columns, Roman columns, and uh, have them that, you know, like the pots launched and they destroyed the, 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 the columns. <laughs> 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 they are connected with the thing, they landed in the central land. Uh, so we have that, uh, we use it as a part of that. Hello. You can have like the NPC with uh, with the noises. Uh, also, in here, what I have like, is the teleport. Uh, but you can. This is made in Blender, the, the lift to the gallery, which will be an NFT gallery. And these were all the different uh, challenges that you had to complete to be a part of the Decentraland uh, verified partners registry, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, so there's like uh, like uh, stuff like moving uh, around. Uh, uh, coin uh, teleport. We we added some some of the sounds uh, from our own vibe as well. Uh, here is the teleport. So like I add sound once the teleport sound just that boosts the experience. Basically, once you go, not you can uh, hear. So like uh, hello the, uh, and our NPC. Here's also we can see like uh, because the sounds uh, you can attach to the. Uh, avatar and you see like this box that is flying next to me this is the sound actually that is, uh, is the sound of the teleport uh, it's funny enough and it only activates once you move here but it's, uh, it, it shows where actually that sound is how close this, this sound is uh, 
I, I'll, so, so for anybody who, who doesn't know, there is a verified partners registry. And now in order to be verified for um, certain skills like audiovisual or modeling or coding or anything like that, um, there are challenges you have to complete. So what they've done here, Koshi and, and team, is put all of their verified experiences together into a single scene um, that they have created. So this is, yeah, this is really cool. I love showing stuff just kind of on their fundamental levels. Um, and I like how you put it all together in a single scene here. Yeah, and also uh, for some reason it actually doesn't run their uh, sound. But the sound I, I just showed in Ableton Live, that was this chord. I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, we can hear the sound. So I can mix it by moving it in space. So if I want it to be quieter, I can just put it way higher. So it sounds like it makes it kind of uh, it makes it generative. The generative composition. Yeah, I think this is the. Yeah, that one's it. Oh yeah, now you can't hear it at all. Yeah, so so the idea actually. Uh, what I'm using often and, and I really like is making generative composition, Brian Eno style, with different uh, length of the loops. Uh, so this long loop is, is the actual chord. No, oh, sorry, this uh, the chord is actually the longer one. This one is the chord, uh, the, the blue one here. Uh, and the shorter one is the sound of the street. Uh, some machinery going on uh, uh, and they are in different lengths and they are looping like in this normal software like Ableton like they will loop here like you can there are ways of actually looping them in different ways but in linear way they would just play you would have silence here and, uh, and then it would play back right but in the central end what we are doing is uh, I'm shortening the loop for the street and I'm making the longer loop and having this muted uh, so it's only this loop plays as one sound and this would place as another sound. And then I have different layers of that as well. And then I put each of them as different sound source, uh, like this, you know, and you can present them as, uh, as cubes. So you can actually see them better in space. Uh, and this way you, you make like a generative art because like each loop is different length. And by the time they meet, like the, with the start, it will take a long time if one is like one minute, the other one is, 33 seconds, you know, like, uh, and uh, if they look, uh, so they will actually pretty much never look. And the more of them you use it, you use, then uh, this way you make like an evolving atmosphere that is uh, quite unique and, each, and is unique for each player wherever they actually move. So like the, the player is another factor that is controlling that because we have spatial audio in the central land, which is the, the, the coolest feature in terms of sound. So if I move these, Right. I, I think that's that's really cool. And so you have multiple sounds that are all moving around and they all change based off of where the avatar is at and it's always evolving based off of the overlap. I, I think that's awesome. Yeah, so that is a really cool that is a really cool way to uh, to integrate audio. They, they are actually stationary most of the time. So I just place them you know like like a speaker. So like this one is a speaker here called. And then once I, I control the volume by going. Underneath. Now you can hear it louder. Now it's quieter. Yeah, I like that. That's all. Like if you were going towards a checkpoint or something, you might want a sound to get louder as you are approaching, you know, the objective, for example, in a game. Kind of a way to lead people from one place to another. Yeah, you can make sound areas as well, where you actually, once you enter into the area as a separate room, uh, then you just hear those sounds. You can trigger the sounds uh, as I just showed with uh, uh, with the teleport. So, like once you enter, that's the trigger. Uh, and in SDK, uh, we have like a constructor that actually this makes uh, the pro different properties of the sound. So, like uh, last time we made this for me uh, once, and we use it actually in, in the scenes. So, like you have name as a string, so like a, as a string. Uh, meaning like several uh, uh, letters, 
Uh, then you have debug, so it uh, it is uh, false and true. So debug is actually you can show it as a uh, cube, uh, and uh, you just define it as true or, or false. You have audio clip, which is actually name of your MP3. You have loop, so you decide whether it's looping or not, and whether it's attachable or not to your avatar. And then you can have transforms. You can uh, move it in space. Uh, uh, and then there are different uh, functions for that. So there is uh, you can play it once, play as loop, and stop. So this is that simple. It, it, you, you can't do actually much with sound, so, but that creates really limited environment. Uh, so that makes me actually quite excited to work with this, because how I kind of uh, I'm thinking about it, how I can use it creatively in a cool way. You know, so I can use you can use loops, multiple loops, different. You can attach uh, sounds, you can trigger sounds, uh, make generative composition. Uh, so we use it, and actually, since uh, myself, my own, and my team's expertise is actually sound. So the, our idea is to bring sound to the, sounds to the metaverse, uh, because most of the decentralized is actually quiet. There are uh, there is actually cool that there is music festival now, but most of the time, uh, the scenes don't contain audio. <laughs> that is true. Uh, yeah, no, and it, it is such a um overlooked i i feel like part of an experience um so i i love what you guys are doing uh i i think this is really awesome and i know we are 10 minutes um over on time but for anybody who might have audio questions or audio visual questions um please feel free to shoot them in and uh koshi might be able to to answer them for you or help you out with any of the audio that you're currently working on but um yeah koshi any any last thing that you want to leave everybody with i know you went over a couple of things that you have um coming up but um yeah just any last words so last words i would just say that because i was talking about this uh, constructor how you apply it is basically for each sound you have those settings that i mentioned so you have teleport sound and then you just i just name it as it is so it's easier to track so it's teleport sound sound is called teleport sound once i actually uh, uh, put it then there's true for for uh, uh, debug the name of it and then whether it's attachable or not uh, and then its position and this is defined and uh, we add it to the builder hat so I have it as a teleport sound and the builder had probably was covered before. So once I see the teleport sound, uh, there it's, it's somewhere in, in here. So, uh, so, yeah. the, uh, so then, then I can, uh, utilize it, uh, uh, in the builder had an actual position. So th this is kind of the, the audio setup. Then I, I call these functions in, in our, uh, like a, uh, main game file uh which just uh yeah like atmos play loop atmos to play loop too so these are the environment sound and the chord that i was showing in ableton live uh and so they are defined in the the sound itself is defined in uh in the uh, constructor then uh, i define the sounds as individual each of the individual in instance of the sound so each each individual file and it, it can be the uh, uh, the sound can be moved in space uh, in here and then i call them in uh, uh, i have it as a challenge file as a play loop and basically the loop is playing all the time and once i come closer to that to that loop to its uh, position then it becomes louder uh, that, that, that's how it, that's how it works and in terms of what we have, uh, so, so the immediate thing we, we have is uh, is the festival. We we, we have thirty minute uh, set. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I'm I'm laughing that we are supporting Bjork and Megadeth because uh, they are playing as well. Uh, Megadeth is on the same day uh, on on tenth of November, uh, ten thirty UTC. Uh, uh, definitely, if you if you want to find out more about the, our collection, join our Discord. The link is on our Twitter. Uh, Glitch Candy Studio. I'm writing this down you know, right now. Glitch NFT Studio. I keep saying uh, Glitch Candy Studio because uh, we, we're making Glitch Candy's collections. Uh, um, yeah, the links. Uh, and we have a drop on territory uh, network uh, with the airdrop. So actually, uh, for the holders of our collections, uh, they get airdrop of that uh, uh, of that collection uh, of that of that uh, 
chain uh, token. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we, we are making, we will have uh, multiple collections on that uh, chain coming forward. We are uh, we qualified uh, for the launch pad. They, uh, they are actually excited about uh, our involvement in metaverse and uh, uh, yeah, we will, our idea is to bring projects that are actually launching on, on territory uh, to the central app to give them uh, like a metaverse experience, uh, putting them into a gallery. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so that's that's the, the most uh, recent stuff that is coming to for us. That that territory looks looks pretty cool, and um, you know, if there's anything that they need done that uh, Glitch Candy, you know, might not be able to entirely support, might be able to uh, run some of their projects through the Sandstorm platform and uh, get some devs on there. Who knows? <laughs> Yeah, we can we can chat actually about it. We can we can show maybe maybe some uh, cool uh, competition. Uh, we can organize some competition for the community maybe through that. Yeah. That might be cool. Once we have HQ there, maybe that there might be cool tasks that they can actually develop for client or something like that. You know? Yeah. Engagement with them. Uh, so definitely, we are open to that. And uh, yeah, the team is quite open. Uh, there, uh, yeah. So I think that might be possible. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that would be awesome. Well, uh, thank you again, Koshi and uh, Glitch Candies, for coming on and sharing kind of your experience with audio and audio visuals, just uh, not only in Decentraland, but uh, how you're using them to connect metaverses all around. And um, if anybody, again, has any questions about audio visual, Koshi is definitely the guy to go to. So feel free to, uh, you know, reach out in Discord or just shoot us some questions. But um, outside of that, we've got contest six that is live, two weeks to go. Maybe use some of this uh, audio visual uh, components in your latest scene. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining the stream. And we'll catch you next week. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, that was fun. Yeah, we'll have to have you back. I, I feel like we could do a whole nother session on audio visuals. <laughs> Any tips or any anything about the music or sound design in general or modular sense or doing it free? Uh, I, I used to be actually a lecturer, so I could uh, totally point uh, people to different things uh, in audio uh, from from the educational point of view and uh, yeah, the, how, what software you can use, what what you, you can uh, uh, yeah, what synth or software because you don't have to spend a lot of money. I'm just you know collector in some way of, of, of the synths and uh, and I love that, but. Not everyone has like a huge budget or whatever, you know, like depends on the project. Uh, I actually developed for like free software as well, uh, lots of patches and uh, uh, it's, it's, yeah, there's lots of open source uh, platforms uh, for, for modular synthesis and sound design. So so definitely uh, come to Glitch Candy's Discord, check our collections and yeah, ask questions. Thanks so much. Yes, absolutely. And we'll we'll post that link as well if we didn't already. But um, thanks again, Koshi. And thank you, everybody, for hopping on this stream. We will catch you next week.